Don here guys and today we're talking about the Catalyst Machine Works Bang God the full build up and review. Are you a god? No. Then Uh, and this thing has been a joy to work on, a joy to fly. And Catalyst Machine Works never seems to fail to impress at the highest levels, pushing the limits of design, pushing the limits of performance, and pushing the limits of integrating everything they have learned over years and years of developing the highest performing, most uniquely designed racing frames on the market, taking that knowledge and ability and coming up with a solution that works incredibly well for your freestyle flights. Now, just looking at the Bang God, that's right, the Bang God. Uh, and the, if you don't know, the reason that they named it that is because they have suffered. Uh, probably them and Armitan are two of the most cloned frames out there on the market. Different sellers on Banggood is constantly um ripping these poor guys off this is even though they're one of the most famous frame design racing shops in the entire world um they're still essentially a small business guys and so we have to be able to support them and their unique designs hundreds and hundreds of hours goes into the design of these things the same as it does for all the people i just mentioned we got to be able to support them. So stay away from those things and stick to the real thing. And let's talk about why this particular offering was so difficult to clone. It wasn't just because of the name, uh, which is a clap back at Bang Good, but calling it the Bang God. I wonder if they thought that they had already cloned it when they saw the name. Uh, it's judo move right there. Is that what pancakes? Well, no, it's like you know, you make fun of Prince in a sketch, and he'll just use you in his album. <laughs> <laughs> he uses your yeah, own well, joke against yourself. He, exactly, what am I gonna do? Sue him for using a picture of me dressed up like it was impossible. <laughs> it's, that, it's that's genius. That's checkmate right there. That's checkmate. Uh, what are they gonna do? That's checkmate already, like we said in the last video. So I will go through the build in a minute, but let's just talk about how this thing flies. This is the six inch version of the Bang God. You can tell that because the arms are a little bit wider for additional strength on that additional length. And I don't really ever, I don't think I've ever reviewed anything six inch here on the channel. So this was a perfect opportunity to be able to do that. And here are a couple of notes. I really, really like a six inch um option uh for the longest time i flew floss th uh floss two six inch arms with five inch props and then eventually after that i flew five inch arms in the front six inch in the rear and why is that i always flew five inch frames or five inch props so i really like that option to be able to run six inch props if you want or five inch props that gives you a little clearance and you're going to be ex exceptionally smooth now the Bang God reduces the pricing point for their entire lineup uh, by a good margin. I want to say the five inch starts at like seventy nine ninety nine, the six inches is like eighty nine ninety nine, and the seven inch maybe it's seventy maybe it's ninety nine or one oh nine. But those pricing have gone down, and they're doing a couple of different things. They are using this professionally machined um, dogbone standoff. Uh, and they're using a total of eight of these around the frame. Now you can arrange these to do what they have previously done with those carbon spacers. Now that is because they have figured out, like so many of us have, if you have the front arms and the rear arms on different planes, um, you can get a little bit cleaner air to those rear arms and you will have a, bit, a little bit of smoother flight. Now, I didn't do that for this build because I wanted to see just how far 
everything has come that was a little more critical back in the day but the modern day um, flight controllers the modern day versions of beta flight can really make almost anything a little bit smoother so it's a, just an optional thing if you're finding any gels in your footage you have the option of converting it to the rear arms to be up higher than the front arms to get that additional you know nth degree of smoothness now um one thing that happened to me, and this is my fault, I did not mount my XM Plus receiver properly, and I just kind of let the antennas dangle out the back. I tend to do that sometimes, especially on freestyle builds when I just, I get the build done, I get it bound, and instead of finishing that last like 3% of work to properly mount my receiver antennas, I'm just like, let's go fly. And <laughs> so that's what I did here. And that actually gave me the opportunity to do a durability test on this frame. So what happened is, I'll show you, I hit a ghost branch and I didn't realize it, but that essentially yanked, that essentially chopped my antennas for my receiver. And when I landed, I noticed I had like one little nub left and I'm like, hmm, well, I'm not really gonna go long range. So let's just fly anyway, cause I was out there to get my footage and i started having too much fun i got about 50 yards away and fail safe about 30 35 feet up in the air and just fell straight down and i was expecting something to be broken something to be broken something to be broken and i looked props were a little bent up gopro had launched itself which i found nothing nothing not a scratch on it um, this thing is beefy. It is beefy. Uh, <laughs> now, of course, I did land into grass, so concrete would have been a different story, but still, I expected something to be broken. And the only thing that I could find was one of the little dog bone standoffs uh, is cracked. Now, it still works totally fine, not really an issue, but that's the only thing. The frame didn't budge. All my electronics were fine. And speaking of that, that is one of the things that Catalyst Machine Works, especially in their freestyle line, offers some of the best component protection around. Um, especially, like this is the Run Cam Phoenix camera. I'm gonna be doing a separate review on that very soon. This is not the cheapest camera, right? But you have superior protection. This is that T-Motor F7 stack that I reviewed on the channel. It's not a cheap stack. It's like 110 bucks. Um, and this thing protects it so well. It's just like a tank. Everything is in there. You'll notice that you have a good amount of durability of this top plate. Now the top plate, I believe is what? Two, two and a half mils. But because of all these very thick standoffs, you really have a lot of strength and rigidity in this metal section. And if you look at the bottom, look at all the hardware that's on there. So speaking of all the hardware, my one gripe with this frame is that you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve screws. Twelve screws to take off the top plate if you need to work on it. Um, that's not the end of the day. These are um, 2.5 hex screws they're super like these screws are outstanding these are special screws that this thing comes with you can see they have like a little blue tint these are um, very very strong they're meant for the ones that go into these little dog bone standoffs uh, to provide that extra strength but uh it is like slightly more work to work on this thing than some other frames but i mean if you think about it like here's my um cheap source one build this has eight screws, so it's four more screws. Like that's really like my biggest gripe and it's so minor. Uh, it really is so minor. Now, how does it fly with these, these GEP RC 2306.5 motors that are 1850 KV? These match perfectly with this setup. I was a little afraid on my Marmot, I went with 2407 motors. They're a little bit bigger than this. And I was afraid this was gonna feel underpowered. Well, with the six inch props, that is simply not the case. It does have a slightly less amount of straight line punch, but how spread out this thing is, how the frame is designed, 
the front brace, which adds yet even more rigidity. Um, part of the thing that you want on a freestyle frame that Armor Time proved with the space grade carbon is to have a frame that is super, super rigid so it doesn't flex, doesn't introduce vibrations. Um, now that's how Armitan was able to do that, but it, you know, it was a little hit or miss with, uh, getting the right pieces of carbon. Well, Catalyst Machine Works solves that issue by making sure these arms are nice and thick. They are sandwiched in for less wiggle and they have this brace across the front that makes it super rigid. That makes the ability to go in a very straight line, low, high, whatever. And I'll try to show a few of those so smooth this thing tracks so smooth it almost feels like a gps drone at at how smooth you're able to get a straight on curve uh, or a straight line or a curve i mean it just flies so great and i love love that i have the option of being able to throw five inch props on here and throw it around all day and even get potentially even more smoothness on here now, i will note that these are the these are what the hq six by three by three v1s props they're not super durable they're not as durable as the five inch they didn't crack but in these little ghost branch crashes they really bent up but Everything is so good. I even flew these a little banged up because I don't have like a ton of six inch sets of props and it's, I couldn't even tell. Um, the frame and the flight controller, this F7 T motor uh, flight controller is so good. <laughs> I mean, so I will get over to a more detailed dive in on the actual build of this thing um, coming up. After I had that issue, with the FR Sky XM Plus, I did convert this over to Crossfire, as you can see, and the antenna is mounted very safely at the back, uh, and it flies even especially on Crossfire, so, so great. So, outstanding job, Catalyst Machine Works. If you are looking for a freestyle option, I really suggest maybe look at the six inch instead of the five inch. I really, do um, like being able to experiment with new things. If you have all five inch freestyle builds, why not try a six inch? You can still run five inch props on it. You gain, you know, just a little bit of weight. I don't know exactly what it is, but I would guess it's maybe 10 or 15 grams, which is, you know, incidental in a total weight of this thing. This is not super light. I'll put the weight on the screen. If I remember, I usually forget, even though I say I'm gonna do it. Whoa, this is heavy. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? But freestyle builds don't have to be light. These motors are super powerful. This stack is super powerful. Everything on here is incredibly powerful. And this um, very pricey T-motor stack has paid off uh, in dividends because throughout those hard crashes that I took, um, not only did I keep the frame safe because of how strong it is, I also kept the stack totally safe it is held up to the power the punches of 6s on these um sort of a medium not low kv that you would normally run a six inch on six inch props um so very impressive now we did have one guy a while back that was sort of crying that he broke an arm on a small crash guys 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 <laughs> that's what it's supposed to do if you do land in just the right way you want your arm to snap, preferably somewhere in this middle range. Why in the middle range? Because that keeps your stacks totally safe. That keeps your motor totally safe. If you land in the wrong way, it doesn't really matter the force. You want that arm to break. You don't want it to stay rigid and transfer to break something in your stack or break your motor. This is the cheapest piece of thing to replace. It's a couple of bucks. Now, I didn't land in any of those ways, even after a 30, 35 foot fall and I broke nothing. So sometimes you get the bear and sometimes the bear gets you guys. What are you going to say? So let's go through the build of this Catalyst Machine Works Bang God really quickly. For the power system, I'm using that T Motor 55 amp F7 stack that I reviewed on the channel recently. I'll put the link in the description to that. Um, for the video system, I am using 
the Runcam Phoenix 2 at the front. This is Runcam's latest premium camera. This is a micro size with a full size camera mount adapter in order to be able to fit it in that space. For the VTX, I'm using the AKK uh, Race Ranger. I'm gonna have a review of that very soon. Um, I am using this very inexpensive uh, Real ACC UXII antenna at the back and that's because I'm not really going to go long range with this and I needed something with a right hand um, angle MMCX and I'll just zip tie this, it'll fit perfectly fine. For the receiver I'm using the XM Plus and for the motors I'm using GEP RC Speed X 2306.5 motors that are 1800 and 50 kV um, and then I am mating that with these beautiful HQ six inch props these are the six by three by three um, so they are sort of a low pitch and it is of course their um, v1s series prop so this should go together very nicely in the air and I am going ahead and going to do 6S on the 6S with very high KV motors. Yeah, so I'm gonna plan on starting with about an 85% throttle cut. I may move that as high as 90 or back down to as low as 80, depending on the motor temperatures. And I'm hoping that this sort of, uh, this used to be a giant size motor. Now it's more of a mid-sized motor, um, but it's very popular. I, I'm, I'm not for sure on this, but I think these are the same motors that are made by RC InPower. Possibly, they look very, very similar. If anybody can confirm that, put it in the comments. Um, these are, of course, a slightly lower price. And I wanted to know, can you push something as heavy as this with these size motors um, versus like a very large motor like I'm using on my Marmot, like a 2407 or a 2508. Um, so quite stunning, the looks of this thing. Um, and it goes together. A little bit easier um, than the smooth operator but look at all of the hardware all the hardware means that it's gonna be very stable and very stiff but also a bit heavy like I said 420 grams um, for this so is that weight gonna make a difference is it gonna negatively impact um, it looks quite beefy with this brace with these um, thicker arms than the 5 inch version and some of the local racing guys are kind of wondering, you know, are we just offsetting weight for maneuverability? And I really don't think that a lot of the freestylers out there care as much on the weight side as a lot of us racers do. Um, if you're a freestyler and you are a weight watcher, please post in the comments but I really don't think it matters as much for a smooth flight, which I think this is primarily for. I think you're okay. Heavy is good. Heavy is reliable. If it doesn't work, you can always hit me with it. With having a few extra grams here and there, um, because it's really gonna be for um, getting smooth footage, smooth HD footage. Now, um, there was not a GoPro session mount for this on Thingiverse. Uh, so I printed out one for the smooth operator. I'm gonna see if I can adapt that to get it on there um, because I don't run a GoPro 8 uh, or I don't run the Hero series camera. So I'm gonna be putting that up on the top. We'll see what the weight ends up with the GoPro and the battery. Printed this out on my Ender 3. I'm gonna be starting that 3D printing series very soon, hot off the printer. So haven't even cleaned up all of the little string yet, but came out pretty good. This is a nice little print. I'll leave this description, uh, the link for this in the description as well. Bang God, check it out, great job. Now, um, this uh, is a little bit of an easier build than Catalyst Machine Works. Um, frames usually are, usually they're a little bit complicated because of that staggered arm design. Um, they're a little bit difficult to work on. This one, aside from the extra screws to remove the top plate, is actually much more in line with your average freestyle build. So they have totally eliminated that difficulty of building and working on it. It is much more serviceable 
uh, and it allowed me to get such a clean build. I always try to spend a little bit of extra time working on my Catalyst Machine Works builds. Why? Because they have Allen over there. Allen is um, a professional builder that builds all their bond and flies. And so every time that I am working on a Catalyst Machine Works build, it's like a challenge to see how close I can get to Allen's quality. And I don't think I'll ever be there. I have met Alan many times, I've raced against him, I've studied all of his builds. The only person I know in the entire FPV community that comes close is a uh, sort of a freelance builder, racer, Drago. Drago makes excellent builds, um, he's about the only one that's on par. And someone once called Drago the Michelangelo of 6337. So if that's the case, then Alan has to be the Da Vinci because his builds are so immaculate, so impeccable. And I've seen bind and flies from pretty much every major company out there on the market. Uh, and his is the only ones that come close. So if you don't have time to do a build, but you still want something premium, you can check out the, their shop. They sell custom order um, bind and flies. You can customize all your own builds. Alan's built thousands of these things. Um, he's super, super, super talented. And uh, every time I get my hands on one of those builds, uh, which I have been fortunate enough to be able to see several of them, I'm always studying every solder joint. I'm always studying every bit of heat shrink because I strive to be able to get those build skills or at least come a little bit closer. This is probably my cleanest build that I've ever done. It's still not quite on his level, but I would say this is good enough to be sold like at most of the shops. But if you want something that even better, Go straight to Callus Machine Works. Thanks, guys.